Welcome to Concept Guru. Learning is fun. The topic for this video is the teeth. We will talk about the kinds of teeth, structure of a tooth, taking care of teeth and gums, healthy diet for healthy teeth, healthy habits for healthy teeth, formation of cavities and microbes. Our teeth are important part of our body. Our teeth help us to bite, tear and grind food. Our teeth also give shape to our face. They also help us to smile and speak. In our entire lifetime, we get two sets of teeth. Temporary teeth and permanent teeth. The temporary teeth are called milk teeth. A newborn child has no teeth. Milk teeth begin to grow when a baby is about 6 months old and continue to grow for 3 years. We get 20 milk teeth in all. 10 in the upper jaw, 10 in the lower jaw. Milk teeth begin to fall one by one between the ages of 6 and 12. The teeth that grow in place of milk teeth are called permanent teeth. There are 32 permanent teeth, 16 in the upper jaw and 16 in the lower jaw. We have four kinds of permanent teeth. They are the incisors, the canines, the premolars and the molars. The shape of each tooth helps it to carry out different functions. So let's talk about incisors first the chisel shaped four front teeth in both the upper and lower jaws are called incisors incisors are flat but sharp at the ends they help us to bite and cut food into smaller pieces incisors are the first teeth that a child gets moving on to canines On either side of the incisors there are sharp pointed teeth these are called canines there are four canines two in each jaw they help us to tear food into pieces so what are premolars there are eight premolars four in each jaw they grow next to canines they are wide and have ridges in them they help us to crack and grind food interesting now let's talk about molars at the back of the jaw there are 12 molars 6 in each jaw they are wider than premolars and have more ridges in them they help us to crush and grind food before we swallow it each tooth has two main parts the crown and the root separated by a thin narrow neck the crown is the top part of the tooth it is seen above the gum the root is the lower part of the tooth it cannot be seen as it is inside the gum it holds the tooth firmly in place the neck is surrounded by the gum The outer white layer is called the enamel. The enamel is the hardest part of the body. The middle layer of the tooth that is slightly yellow is called the dentine. This is softer than the enamel. The innermost layer of the tooth is called the pulp. Now the pulp is soft and has blood vessels and nerves. The nutrients reach the tooth through the blood vessels now that we know about our tooth let's now talk about taking care of teeth and gums healthy teeth are a part of a healthy body our teeth along with the tongue and saliva help us to chew food so that it can be swallowed and digested easily we should take good care of our teeth now how to do that 
Brush your teeth twice a day, once in the morning and once at night before going to bed. Gently massage the gums with a finger. Use dental floss to clean between the teeth. Clean your tongue to remove germs. Rinse your mouth after every meal. And do not use pins or sharp objects to clean your teeth. What we eat determines the health of our teeth and gums. We must have a healthy diet for healthy teeth. Foods rich in calcium such as milk, yogurt, cheese, almonds and eggs keep the enamel of our teeth strong. Foods rich in vitamins C and D make our teeth strong. Foods such as oranges, lemons, tomatoes and broccoli are rich sources of vitamin C. Vitamin D is present in fish, wheat and eggs. We should avoid sugary food. Sugar stays on the teeth for a long time. It allows germs to grow. Soft drinks such as colas damage the enamel of our teeth. Crunchy food such as apples and carrots brush away food particles from the teeth just like toothbrushes. The saliva produced when we eat an apple or carrot washes away bacteria and food particles. A fibrous fruit or vegetable also stimulates our gums and keeps them healthy. Let's see what are some healthy habits for our healthy teeth. A dentist is a doctor who takes care of gums and teeth. We should visit a dentist once in six months. The dentist checks our teeth for cavities. She or he also checks our gums. Regular visits to a dentist can help to prevent damage to our teeth and gums. Talking about damage, if we take good care of our teeth, we can save them from decaying. When we eat, bits of the food remain stuck to the teeth. This can cause growth of germs. If we do not brush our teeth properly, a sticky layer called plaque develops on the teeth. Plaque is made up of bits of food, saliva and germs that live in the mouth. These germs fit on the bits of food stuck in the teeth and produce acids, which is a type of chemical. If we take good care of our teeth, we can save them from decaying. When we eat, bits of the food remain stuck to the teeth. This can cause growth of germs. If we do not brush our teeth properly, a sticky layer called plaque develops on the teeth. Plaque is made up of bits of food, saliva and germs that live in the mouth. These germs feed on the bits of food stuck in the teeth and produce acids, which is a type of chemical. Over time, the acids eat through the enamel and make a hole called a cavity. If the cavity is not filled in time, it can cause further decay. When the germs attack the dentine and reach the pulp of the tooth, they cause severe pain. Tooth decay also results in bad breath, bleeding gums and indigestion. It may even cause the teeth to fall out. Now we know that the germs can cause a lot of damage to our teeth. So let's learn a little bit about the germs. Microbes are extremely small living things. They can only be seen under a microscope. Some microbes are useful to us. However, some microbes are harmful to us and can cause diseases. The disease causing microbes are called germs. Microbes are the oldest form of life on earth. They outnumber all other living things and make up most living matter. Most microbes do not cause diseases. Now that's a fun fact. Bacteria is an example of a harmful microbe. Bacteria cause diseases such as typhoid and tuberculosis. Viruses are smaller than bacteria and cause diseases such as common cold and influenza. Protozoa 
cause diseases such as malaria and dysentery. Fungi grow on dead plants and animals. They cause diseases such as ringworm and athlete's foot. Now, not all microbes are bad. There are some useful microbes as well. Bacteria change milk to cheese or curd. Bacteria also helps us to digest our food. Some bacteria help in decaying of dead plants and animals. This is very important for clearing up our surroundings. We eat mushrooms, don't we? A mushroom is an example of a fungi. We get medicines from certain microbes. For example, penicillin is made from a fungus called penicillium. And you know what? A fungus called yeast helps in making bread and cakes fluffy. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Press the bell icon for our latest videos.